An upcoming change that lets you calculate recharge time, the ability to sideload removed, chat GPT tweaks for Apple intelligence, and if you're a fan of AirTags, then listen up. A new Find My feature lets you share the location of your AirTag with a trusted person or an airline. The ability to stop video looping. And yes, the auto exposure and autofocus lock feature that Apple showcased during the iPhone event is now here for iPhone 16 users. All this and more as we take a look at what's new in 18.2 Beta 2. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up. Click the subscribe button and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. How's it going folks? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. So here it is, iOS 18.2 Developer Beta 2. And this comes with improved battery life and device temperature management. So if you notice your phone getting really hot on previous beta, hopefully this will help out uh, in that area. But you can see the build number here, 22C5125E. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what's new in this update. So speaking of battery, there is a new upcoming battery intelligence feature. Now it's not yet user facing, but we've looked in the code and we've identified an upcoming feature that builds on some of the already existing battery management features in iOS. So one such feature was introduced a while back, the ability to set a charge limit. And previously this was set at 80%, you couldn't change it. But in iOS 18, you can now change that charge limit between 80 and all the way up to 100% if you want to. But in a future version of iOS, you'll find a new feature that will show the time remaining to charge your iPhone. It's a new framework called Battery Intelligence is gonna calculate the estimated time to recharge your phone, most likely based on the amount of energy being received by the device, and users will have the option of receiving a notification once it reaches a specific charge level. Now. When you had developer mode enabled on the last beta, you were actually able to sideload an app, even if you weren't in the EU. The problem was it didn't actually work. Like it would sideload, but you couldn't actually launch the alternative app store as you see there. So now Apple has removed this ability. It was apparently a mistake. So now you'll notice when you try to sideload, it'll tell you right up front that it cannot install the application. So nothing really lost here. Now, if you open up the settings app, go to Apple Intelligence and Siri, you'll find the chat GPT extension there. That was in the previous beta, right? But now you'll see under advanced capabilities where it says daily limit, and it'll tell you if you're over your limit for accessing the chat GPT API. So basically your access to some of the advanced capabilities will be throttled. But if you sign up for chat GPT plus, which is 20 bucks a month, you get five times the messages on chat GPT 4.0, higher limits for photos and file uploads, more natural real time conversation. But that last part at least seems to be specifically for the chat GPT app, which you can install using the link below there. And we'll give it a test. Hello, what is the circumference of the Earth divided by two? The Earth's circumference is about 40,000 kilometers. So if you divide that by two, you get about 20,000 kilometers. But again, this doesn't appear with the Apple intelligence integration. Chat GPT, what's the Earth's circumference divided by two? So it's not going to talk to you with those advanced voices, but it's just going to provide you with text feedback just like this. Now, when sending ChatGPT a screenshot of the web, you're going to have the ability to choose between full content and a screenshot. So here you can see screenshot. This is just a screenshot of my, you know, my home screen. If you tap on that, you get a, a larger image of that screenshot, and then you could tap the X to remove it from the query just like that. But here, Note what happens now. I'm going to zoom in on this and I'm going to ask ChatGPT what this page is about. So ChatGPT, describe this screen. All right, we'll just give it a second. All right, so it's going to say send this content from Safari to ChatGPT, but notice what you get there. You get the ability to choose between a screenshot or full content. So if you just do the screenshot, it's only going to take what it sees in that screenshot. So let me show you what happens when I do that. So I send it and notice the output it gives me. 
It says this screen displays a web page by Chance Miller and it just talks about only what it can see. So iOS 18.2 beta 2 was released, right? But I'm gonna do that again. So chat GPT, describe this screen. All right, now this time though, I'm gonna choose not screenshot, I'm gonna choose full content. It's gonna take the full content of the page as you can see there. So it gets access to all that text data. Just gonna send that now. And it's gonna be able to describe much more than it could when it was just taking that screenshot. So you can see it talks about mail app design upgrades, camera control upgrades, iPhone 16, exposure lock features, etc. Pretty cool feature there with chat GPT, Apple intelligence extension. Now the notes app, you get a new create image button. So I'm just going to highlight that text in the copy paste menu, tap create image, and you'll see it creates that image. So in this case, brown rice that is happy and it's a pretty accurate, uh, interpretation of that text. So I'll just tap done. And there we go. And there's some options here. When you tap on that image, you can even update the query if you want to, just by tapping that Apple intelligence button, add more description if you want to, et cetera. Now image one gets some improvements as well. So in my opinion, it works a little bit better. Like I didn't have to try it as many times like I did before where I had some challenges initially with image one where it didn't do a great job of recognizing uh, that I had drawn in house. So I'm just gonna say made a brick. The previous time I did it, it did work eventually, but it took like several times. This seems to be just a little bit more reliable in its image generation, it's still not perfect. What has your experience been like with the image wand? I keep wanting to call it magic wand, but it's image wand. And then image playground. I feel like there are some improvements there in this, just the overall aesthetic of the images that it creates. Uh, doesn't quite look like me, but the source material was a persona from the Apple Vision Pro, so it probably wasn't the best source material there to pick from, but it just seems like the actual image looks a little bit more realistic. I don't know if that's the right word. It just seems a little less cartoony, if you will. And then the mail app gets the ability to customize badge notifications. So here you can see my primary, right here. So that contains all of my primary mail. And then you can of course go over to other like updates or shopping or whatever the case may be. But now when you go into the settings, you're going to be able to actually have badge notifications apply to either all mail or just those that appear within primary. So if I go to settings, notifications, and then mail and scroll down, you'll see customized notifications, but you're going to find a new option when I go in there, first of all, make sure I have badges enabled, uh, but you'll see customized notifications and you have the ability, see 1035 there. Now, if I go back, I can choose all unread messages or primary unread messages. When I switch over to all, you see that badge count jump up significantly. Yes, I know I need to read my emails. So the icons and settings, you'll notice several changes here. So I'm gonna go in customize and I'm gonna go into dark icon mode here. Now watch what happens when I open up settings, you'll see those dark icons reflected, bam, within the settings, but it doesn't stop there. You want to notice when we switch over to dark mode, those dark icons get a nice little gray outline to make sure they don't blend into the background, which I think looks nice. But again, it doesn't stop there. So what we're going to do now, go back and we're going to enable tint this time. So we're going to tint it icons there go back and you can see those tinted icons are now updated and it has all of them except for apps. But even inside apps, you get the tinted icons as well. So yeah, so it's just a little bit more expanded than it was in the previous version, that being iOS 18.2 beta one. All right, so there's also vehicle motion cues that appear in the dynamic island. So if we enable that, of course, this is the thing that helps prevent motion sickness while you're riding in a vehicle by putting those little dots on the screen. And you can see when that's enabled or disabled right there within the dynamic island. 
And here's something really cool. So what's new in Find My, the splash screen? Share item location so you can get help finding a lost item by sharing its location with an airline or a trusted person. They're gonna be able to see the location of your item on a map. So here, I'm just gonna give you an example. This is an air tag. I'm gonna go here and select share item location. It's currently off. Tap that and you'll notice the illustration with the luggage and the air tag using Apple's little air tag strap there. So you see share item location, get help finding your lost air tag by sharing its location with an airline or trusted person. The person who opens the link will be able to see the location of your air tag for a limited amount of time. So tap continue. So item location is ready to share. You can now share the location link. Some apps will let you paste the link directly when reporting an item missing. So you can just tap the little link there. It'll give you an option to copy or you can tap share link and you can use the share sheet to share that link with one of the, your favorite apps, for instance. So I'm just gonna tap done. So you can see the share item is sharing for seven days. And when you open it, you can see the expiration date, if anyone actually visited the link, and then you can share the location link again or turn the item location off. So here, when they click the link, this is what they're gonna see. This page is intended solely to locate the item belonging to the person who shared the URL. Don't use it to track somebody without their consent. So I'm gonna log in here and you're gonna see, bam, one person. So it instantly sees that I am looking and here it just tells you your phone number and the serial number of the AirTag. But you can see here, no refreshing is needed. The item's location will automatically update when a newer location is available and access is temporary. So the person can obviously stop sharing sooner or if they locate it, sharing will be turned off automatically anyway. So what do you guys think about that new feature? Let me know. The Shortcuts app gets four new fitness actions. So you can see open settings too, and you can choose what setting panel it opens to. You also have open award, and you can choose between your available awards. You also have open fitness sessions too, and then you can choose workouts, mindfulness, or all, and then open all awards, or go for it, or close your rings, or whatever section you want it to open to. Now in iOS 18, Apple made it so that videos in the Photos app would continuously loop. But now in iOS 18.2 Developer Beta 2, you have the option to disable looping. So if you go to Settings and you go to Photos, you're gonna see if you scroll down, the autoplay motion, but here it is, loop video. So if you disable that, your video will play once and then it won't play again until you invoke playback again. So here you can see it playing through and it's gonna stop this time just like that. Now for a camera control, you could either single click or double click to launch your desired camera application. And now in iOS 18.2 beta two, there is an accessibility option that allows you to choose the speed at which you press the camera control button to open that app. So you can choose default or slow or slower if you want to. So slower, I can just press it once, press it again, it launches the camera app. But this update's biggest new feature is the ability to lock exposure and focus by a light press on the camera control button. So once enabled, if I light press, you can see auto exposure, auto focus lock. Previously, you would have to just hold like this on the screen to enable auto exposure, auto focus lock. But now, simply light hold the camera control button, you can see it locks in that focus and exposure. So when I move back, it doesn't automatically refocus. And even if I introduce something really bright into this frame, you're not gonna notice any changes to the exposure, right? But watch what happens as soon as I let go of the camera control button. Yeah, the focus and the exposure is updated. And then if I long press to lock again, even if I remove that light source, it still stays dark until I release the auto exposure, auto focus lock via camera control like that. So this is a super cool feature that makes your iPhone work even more like a standalone camera. And finally, there's iPhone mirroring. You can now use personal hotspot along with iPhone mirroring. Previously, you couldn't do this, but here I have my personal hotspot enabled for my iPhone 16 Pro Max, but notice I'm using iPhone mirroring. Let's go back to the home screen. You're gonna see a little personal hotspot icon in the dynamic island. So that is a pretty cool change as well. 
So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think about iOS 18.2 developer beta two. And as always, if you appreciate this video, leave a thumbs up. And if you want more videos like this, click that subscribe button. And also check out these two.